Hello and welcome back to Football Index Moneyball. Today I'm going to try a different type of video for you and basically I'm going to talk you through what I do to try and find players or one of the methods. I'm going to make this into a series. This is just the first method and it's the method that I used to find this week's pick of the day which was Granite Xhaka. And this is just using trackers. Basically what I do is sometimes I'll buy one or maybe like 10, 20, 30 of a player and then regularly I'll just keep checking on who's got the lowest profit and then I'll use that to try and find a player who I want to top up or who has dropped in price since I first added them to the list. This is what I actually did this week to find my player and I was looking through this list and there were some players that definitely jumped out at me. There was uh, Lacazette who I think is great value right now, uh, Gibbs White, Trippier, Koke and Lanzini was the one I landed on so I'd been watching Lanzini for a long time. His stats are great and I like him as a player, but he's been injured a lot. And I knew that the injury that he got most recently with a dislocated shoulder, obviously now with this time of the league being shut down, he's going to be coming back when football does restart. He'll be fit and ready to play again. So that was the player who I went out with the intention of using for the video, as I mentioned. The next thing I do when I find a player like that is I usually go to Football Index Edge. And there's a couple of tables on here that I really like. And the player information is the one that I'm going to go to now. So this is a great tool that I use for filtering. So I know the age of Lanzini is 27 and I go for midfielders. And once I've done that, I'll, I'll filter them by highest price and I'll just look down the list. So what I'm looking for is first of all, price targets. Which of these players do I think that Lanzini could reach their price of with a few good games or a PB win and stuff like that. So obviously Paul Pogba, I'm not really interested in. Coutinho, Zayic, they're not really fair comparisons. So when I, I ended up using Fred as my top comparison, that's the first player I noticed who I thought, okay, Lanzini might be able to reach that level if he uh, you know, if he starts hitting some good scores. And when I went down to Lanzini, that, that's when I looked for my uh, comparable purchase options. So I got down here to 73p for Lanzini and the, as I'm looking around at who's at that value, that was when I met, noticed that Granite Xhaka, another player I've been keeping an eye on, but I didn't actually own a tracker, and Jonas Hoffman were the two players I used as my comparable options, but there was quite a few available in that bracket. And Xhaka was a player I knew because I've seen in the two years nearly that I've been on the index that he's won a lot of dividends, like more than you would expect. As I explained in my video for the pick of the day, he's he seems to just get a big PB scores quite regularly and he, he has got a solid base. The next thing I do once I've got that is I go to the master stats table. These are both premium tables. What I usually do is I'll go to the master stats table and I'll filter by the players that I've just identified as comparable options first. So now I've filtered the players and I've just got the three players that I wanted. And the first thing I look at is match day dividends. How much have they actually won in dividends? And with Xhaka, I suspected that he'd won a lot from my knowledge of Football Index and just watching it over the last 18, 20 months. And as a, as you can see straight away, he has won quite a lot of uh, dividends, but Jonas Hoffman's up there as well. So that kind of, when I started looking at Dracker, he was about 77p, so it was, it was pretty similar. So then you move on to the average match day scores. And again, there's a big disparity here. Hoffman has got 12p in dividends, but he's won them all this year, whereas Xhaka won them in past years. Average straight away, Jack is looking like the better option. He plays for a big team in terms of media, so that's a good thing as well. And then you go to peak scores, and again, Jack has got a good peak score, but Hoffman's got a better one. But I'll look at that a bit more in a minute. Number of match day scores 118. So he's played a lot more games than these two players over the last three, four years. And then media dividends. So this is the other big difference here with these players is he's got 14p in media dividends, and I knew where that had come from. Uh, with the incident with the throw in the shirt but still it just proves that he can win media and that he's someone that the media will write about if things happen that's a good sign so that that's basically like the criteria i look for on this page the next thing i do i organize the match day scores by highest and i usually go through and count just manually like how many scores over 200 does he have how many scores over 150 uh, another thing i look at is what days did he win on so he won his top P pb score which he actually didn't get any um dividends for he got it on a friday so 277 on a friday that means it didn't have the european multiplier and then if we go to hoffman hoffman's was on a sunday as well so his doesn't have the multiplier either but when you look at the 
number of scores over 200 and the number of scores over 150, that also backs up what I'd basically suspected in that Granite Xhaka, for, for the price of 81p, he's got a very good PB record. Like, his scores are all pretty consistently high, and that goes with his average of 113. That's a very good average for, for any player, really. And, and the fact that he has got six scores above 200, and only one of them he won PB, so that's pretty unlucky, really. But then, obviously, he's got some lower scores from last year and the year before. People who haven't been on the index that long won't realise that scores of 195 last year was, like, a really good score. And he won that on a Thursday, so that was in the Europa League last year, I'm guessing, maybe. Uh, the last one was a... Th so, yeah, he's got two on Thursdays. But it, I think, overall, the other thing I look for is I go down and count how many times he's actually won. So, I think with the Jacker, it was five different occasions that he'd won PB, which is a good sign, definitely. Uh, you can also do the same with media and just see the dates that he won and they all are around the same time where he had that incident but there's definitely potential there for a more of a transfer story to come and that's not really that relevant the other thing you can look at is is the trend of his graph down here at the bottom so this is all on football index edge if i didn't mention that earlier and there is a link in the description if you want to join up you can sign through my referral link and that helps me in the channel out so yeah, from there I then go to FootMob and basically manually I start taking all the data from recent years because they don't normally have as good a data when you go to look 2016, they don't have any data for him. But when you go back to 2016, 17 in the Prem, he's got pretty much all his data there. So what I do is I put it into the table that you'll probably have seen in the pick of the days. And that basically, it helps me to make the case a bit further in my mind. And usually when I go through this process for the pick of the day, I become more and more convinced. And I do go through this process with players that I don't use for pick of the day. Sometimes I'll get this far and I'll, I'll, I'll fill all the information in and I'll think, okay, that's not really good enough. There's a reason why he's so much cheaper than other players. Uh, I don't tend to do this for other players in the list though like if i go back to the uh list of players now here is where i just look at fred and then i start looking at other players who i could probably compare him to and that's where i came up with Verratti um and jesse lingard because i thought hasn't won any match day dividends and i know that Verratti has won some match day dividends but i wasn't sure how good he was in comparison to Xhaka. so then i would go back to the master stats table and i would add those three in and then see if it still stands up that Xhaka could reach their level. So now I've added in the three players that I was going to use for my price targets, and I can see straight away that none of them have got the same match day dividends as Xhaka, so that's, again, a positive. Although Fred has only really played this season, so I'd say he is a better player in terms of a hold, and he also has won quite a lot of media. But at £1.67, I think the disparity between the two players is not really justified, which is what I'm always looking for. Like, if we look here at dividend yield, you can see that Jacques has got a much higher history yield than any of the other players. Um, Lanzini is down at 62% off his current peak price, which is something that I do look for. Jacques is down 74%. So Lanzini was a good spot, and I do think he's good value as well, but I, I, I am flexible when I start looking for a player. If I see someone who's down at a similar price and just seems like a better value pick, then I will switch partway through the research. And it, it worked out well this time because I, I, Jack has not risen that much off the back of the video and I don't really care whether they rise off the video, to be honest, because I hold them anyway. And I, this especially is a kind of player where I'm looking for him to be winning PB in the next 12 months and making some media possibly. So it doesn't really matter if he rises one or two P off the back of the videos for me. So that's all I've got for you on today's video. Before you go, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can search for at index moneyball. And if you're interested in some premium memberships to improve your trading, then there's links to Football Index Club, Football Index Edge, which is the platform I've been using here, and to my Patreon page in the description. Thanks for watching and good luck on the index.